on the other camera. So, hello, hello, hello. I am Stars Tina, and today is my very first event. Hi, Deshaun. And this is called Hope for the Holidays. The purpose of this event is for anyone who has had a loss during the holidays or some type of trauma or tragedy, and it's just not a good time of year for them. And I'm so excited because I have my soul sisters with me who's gonna be joining me. Today we're gonna to be talking about living while grieving, and not just living, but living and thriving and living your best life. We're gonna be talking about self-care, about balance, and just how to stay positive through it all. So if you didn't know, my son was murdered about five and a half, February will be six years ago. And I came up with this idea because he was an organ donor and the organization that, hi Jill, that um, the organ donor transplant company, every year they would have an event for the family. And it helped me so much. It gave me so many tools and tactics and strategies and things to get through. So I wanted to share how I get over this. And whether you've had a loss, whether it was a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, um, we all go through some type of loss. So the way it's gonna work today, I would love for everyone to keep their cameras on. You can keep your um, microphones unmuted because my girl Lisa, she actually invited me. Hi Phil, how are you? Uh, Lisa has invited me to take upon, instead of you go to an event, people just talk and it's like diarrhea of the mouth. It's good to have conversation. So I know in this link somewhere there's a place where you can raise your hand, but if you're not savvy with the Zoom, just raise your hand if you wanna say something at any point in time. It's just gonna be open conversation. Um, because when I went to the event, it helped me a lot. Sometimes we just need to speak. So Phil, I'm not aware of who you are, but welcome, thank you for coming through. How did you hear about the event, Phil? Um, I heard about it from a uh, friend who works at Alive. Works where? Wonderful, wonderful. Deborah, I'm loving your photo, girlfriend. I'm telling you guys, with getting close to 50, it's like I can't even, I'm losing all my senses. I can barely hear. So, <laughs> so we're gonna jump right in and get started. Um, I'm gonna have Lisa begin uh, with our speaking. So I'm just gonna turn the microphone over to you, Lisa. Like I said, it's an open conversation. So we're on and popping. Go ahead, Lisa. Oh, I'm starting? Oh, fantastic. Yes. <laughs> Oh, Deborah, turn your camera, one second. Deborah, turn your camera off, you're driving, it's okay. If you wanna turn it off, it's okay. We want safety. If you wanna keep it on, it's great. I would love to have it on, but it's safety for me. But go ahead, uh, Lisa. You know, um, this, is, this is a wonderful topic and a needed topic because I know for me, the holidays um, used to represent a heaviness because I lost my mother-in-law to cancer. And my mother-in-law was the one woman that saw me in my pain when everyone else saw and believed the mask, the facade that I wore, my mother-in-law was the one that said, baby, you gotta get out, you know? Um, so the bond that we have is undeniable. And when she was taken from us to cancer, it, it uh, pretty darn near destroyed me. But, you know, I really had to, to change the way I saw the loss and realize that you know, had gained so much um, in that short period of time, she gave me back my life. You know, she she pushed me to live on purpose. So now when I'm dealing with moments where I struggle with missing her, I remember to live for her. I remember to honor her in every single step that I take. It's important that when we shed tears, we remember that we're not only crying for lost but let's cry for the beautiful wonderful incredible thing that we had you know and take the time to remember take the time to remember all that they were for you but you know what allow yourself that and and allow yourself the time to feel what it is you're feeling remember we're not in pain, in pain olympics here this is not about one person saying my pain is greater than your pain let's see if yours is worse than mine this is about realizing that we're all going through some sort of grief, whether it is a loss of a friendship, a loss of a job, a loss of a child. There is some sort of grief that we are all encountering at any moment of any given day. COVID has shown us that we've lost our ability to be able to walk around freely. Some people are grieving those things. But it is in those times where we have to also remember that we're not sitting in the boat alone if we would pick our heads up for a moment and look to the left and the right of us you'd realize that there are other people in the same boat as you are and then comes in tina's famous line 
your tribe is your vibe. Your tribe is so important. And if you have this being that you believe in, you have to trust that God is going to ensure that there are people that are around you that will help to encourage you, that will help to lift you, that will help to carry you and get you from day to day until you're able to walk on your own. So there's my words, Tina. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'd love for it to be a conversation about anything you are encountering, anything you'd like to talk about. But that's my part about how I deal with the loss of my wonderful mother-in-law. So uh, before we go on to Deshaun, you, you, oh, I'm muted. I recorded it, that's why I came forward. So before we go on to Deshaun, if you would like, um, I like that it's intimate. I asked him in the email if you had a photo of your loved one bring that with you. Um, for me, I do have a photo. I also have Jamal right here, my son, who was cremated. So I pretty much keep his ashes with me all the time, no matter where I go. So if one at a time you would like to say who you are, the loved one that passed away, when they passed away. Um, and I, not only when you're grieving that one person, it might bring on the, the grief of other people that passed away before them. So for me, it was my son. And then before that, it was my father, who was 49 years old. And then it was my grandmother, who I was extremely close to. So as you grief and it gets longer and longer, it does not get easier, but you understand it and you can manage it. So we will start with, I see at the top, Renee, I'll let you go and then Phil and then on down. If you just wanna say your name, the person, that passed away, maybe a little memory or something to honor them. Did you say me, too? Yes, you, Renee. Uh, for me, it's my dad, um, and I try to honor him every day. Um, he was very, as you know, he was very involved with the civil rights, and that's very important to me. So for me, it's my dad. Wonderful. Would you like to share a memory of you and your dad, Renee? Um, my dad was always there for, for me, and um, the, the memories that I have of him are like what I said, him fighting for the justice for all people. I, I, I was there many times with him. I try to honor him by continuing that and things that I do. Thank you, thank you. Phil, would you like to go next and share? You don't have to share, but again, it helps to release. Sure, yeah. I, um, I lost my dad last year um, unexpectedly and, uh, in the midst of all the other things happening. Uh, um, and so I haven't really done a whole lot of, uh, of formal kind of um, therapy grief counseling or, or, or therapy around around that um, uh, change jobs that in the midst of things as well and so it's just been kind of layers of things that have um, seemed to compound and uh, and yeah so uh, I spoken with a friend she was mentioning things and, and shared about the class but I didn't get a, a follow-up email so I wasn't sure or prepared exactly what uh, what this was going to be. So um, anyway, um, uh, I suppose a memory of my dad. He was always very actively involved um, with me as a kid through like Cub Scouts and camping and being outside. And, uh, I still uh, love to be outside every chance I get. I feel maybe closer. To who he was when I get a chance to do that. And you said it was about two years? Uh, yeah, a year and a half ago. It was, um, April of 20. Thank you for sharing. Um, Deborah, I'm not sure if you're able to speak. I will unmute you because I muted you because I heard you as you were shopping. <laughs> so would you like to speak, Deborah? Hi. 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 Yep. Okay. Well, thanks for having this. I am in shock, guys. But um, this is I'm Deborah, Tina's friend from New Jersey, and um, I wasn't expecting to share, but her 
because the wound is very deep and very fresh for me. And I guess this is Dad's day because it's my dad who passed the name this past May. And um, I don't want to get emotional because it's very fresh for me. Um, my mom, 12 years, so I'm missing both of them. Um, it's, it's just, I have a hole in my heart. And Tina, I just don't know how you do it. I know it's been a process of years. I just, I know it's on. It's just extremely painful. Extremely painful. I just do it. Deborah, I have to say, even though I never met your dad, I have to share you guys, her dad's birthday is around the same time as my birthday. And he lives in New York and I'm in Jersey. So whenever she would go visit him, she'd come and visit me first. And she'd come and she always bought me a present, great presents. She's like, okay, I'm going to see my dad you know, for his birthday. And we'd always talk about your dad. So it feels like I know him even though I never met him. And she told me just like out of the blue, her father passed away. So I'm hugging you right now, Deborah, and so sorry for your loss. And today is just gonna help you get through the holiday because this is gonna be challenging, but we got you. You're up, Jill. Thank you, thank you, thank uh, you. Deshawn says she's having issues. Linda, would you like to speak? I see you are muted. I also see Deshawn is muted. Mommy, would you like to unmute and speak? We would love to hear from you. This is Linda. I can speak. I'm sorry, I don't have a video, but I'm actually getting ready for work. I have to work today. It's okay, girlfriend. So I'll speak while I'm getting ready. But uh, I've lost uh, both of my parents. My mom was unexpected. It's been over 20 years, but it's still fresh around the holidays because she loved Thanksgiving and she loved Christmas. Uh, my dad, he went through an illness for almost two years. You know, I always wondered, like, is it better to struggle with someone going through an illness because at least you get to say your goodbyes or the unexpected, and I have decided that both are crappy and I don't like either way. Uh, and then, of course, Bakari, she's my nephew, and Jill's mom was uh, a very good friend to our family because my parents and her parents uh, are the same. All of them are like around the same age and her father and my mom all, uh, both died in the same year. And uh, Jill's cousin, Jackie, I, she actually called me and asked me to go to the hospital to be up there with her so she wouldn't be by herself until they could get to town. So. So a lot of the losses that Jill have, that Jill experienced, I've been uh, connected to those individuals also. So I know I feel her loss, I, and I, I understand the loss, especially of a mother and of a father. And uh, Bakari, I think, just hit the fan, all of the family pretty hard. And so for the holidays, I just kind of try to stay busy. So I'm working on Thanksgiving and. I'm trying to convince my coworker to let me work Christmas for her so that I don't really have to really think about it. And then I always try to do a, like a something from the angel tree because that's what me and my dad I always did was get a, a doctor kid from the angel tree. So I still try to carry that tradition on in his memory and his honor just to, you know, because I felt I found that when I focus on other people and helping other people, that kind of helps me. 
Wonderful. So Linda, I do want to thank you for coming through. Make sure you have a pen and paper even though you're getting ready for work because I have a lot of good things that's going to help you get through the holidays. Mommy, are you going to speak? I see you're muted and your camera is not on. If so, I'm going to turn it over to Jill, hopefully to Sean. Oh, there she is. Go ahead. You're muted still, Mommy. Go ahead. Yes, yes, thank you for sharing. One thing since you mentioned that, Miss Hattie Mommy, one thing you guys might wanna write down is planning. That's part of my notes I'm gonna mention later, but I'm just gonna mention it now while we're here. Being that you already know, um, I'm gonna say, don't say I suffer because you know I don't want anything negative out in the atmosphere. Just, you know, you can say it, but plan things. When you know Thanksgiving's coming or a birthday or a holiday, make plans ahead of time. Linda, I love how you said you're gonna work. Uh, but it's always good to be around, like Lisa said, being around your tribe, your family, people that support you and that love you and that are there for you. So that's one thing that you want to do is make sure you plan. I plan way ahead, guys, because I am so super emotional. February, that was the son. My son was killed for the first five, four years. Every February 26th, I got a ticket and pulled over from the cops. I'm lucky I didn't get arrested because I am just like screaming at them. And then one year the cop said, miss, you probably shouldn't drive this time of year. So if you know what your triggers are, before they even happen, set yourself up. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jill right now. Jill is gonna talk about trust and over to you, Jill. trust what this test is teaching you because it is a test it's a test of um, your strength it's a test of your will it's a test of how you're going to allow yourself to be used in this situation and so although it's a situation of grief you have to be able to um, just trust your inner voice listen to what it's telling you um, if you're feeling like you are in trouble or in need reach out to someone out to those close to you because it's a lot of emotional pain and our emotional pain is even sometimes more detrimental to us than our physical pain because it's something you can bury easily it's something you don't see it's something you don't feel to like trigger you like if you break a bone you feel that pain so you know don't step on this leg because i'm in pain whereas when you're dealing with emotional pain it's easy to suppress to hide, it's easy to cover up, it's easy to walk around and just smile and nobody knows what's going on inside, but you're hurting yourself and you're causing yourself um, more internal pain that will turn into physical pain over time if you don't go ahead and try to deal with it and release it. There will be times when you feel like you're just too depleted to even talk or text with people, and that's okay. You just need to let your friends know, you know, I need some time. Um, don't isolate yourself. So I'm not saying to just retreat and go off on your own because that's also detrimental because then you, you can't deal with the things that you need to deal with in isolation. It's just, um, it's not a good space. And um, we were not made to be alone. 
I mean, from the beginning of time, God created man, and then he created woman to be with man because we weren't created to be alone. And we can't heal in isolation. And then I'd say trust God's grace because he knows what he has put on you. And even though um, people say he won't put on you more than he, more than you can bear, it does say that, but the second half to that is because he expects us to give it to him so that he can help carry us through that. So just keep that in mind too when people tell you that. So it's kind of a half truth. Um, the other thing is just to trust his plan. And as part of his plan, make sure you have a battle plan and make your battle plan like you have a meal plan, you have a workout plan, you have a financial plan. Have a um, plan to help yourself get, kind of like what Tina's saying, have a plan to help you get through those seasons that will um, come up. I mean, they come up throughout the day, throughout the year. And sometimes there are things that you can't plan far enough in advance, but still, if you can jot down things that you know, for instance, um, if I'm out somewhere and I see a Lakers jersey and it's triggering me, so then when I go home, write down, okay, next time I see something like this, what what, what am I going to do so that I'm okay with that? Or how can I get myself in a better state when that happens? So um, the last thing that I'll say about trust is basically just trust that um, God will never abandon you. Um, he, even if we reject him, even if we ask him why things happened, which is okay, um, just realize that he's going to be there with you through this, through thick and thin. You will have moments where you feel like there is no one you can depend on. You may call someone, they may not pick up when you need them at that moment, but remember that you always have him at your side and you can always talk to him and he will be there to comfort you. He will send people to comfort you in your need. He will send people to impart a word for you that you need. Um, so, I mean, that's the biggest thing that I can say is just trust that although his plan seems different than what you expect or what you would desire, he has an ultimate purpose and his purpose is always the best purpose. So just, if you can keep that at the forefront of your mind, even through your grief, even when you're asking him why, um, just remember that he loves you, he's not trying to hurt you, and he hurts just as we hurt. So, that's all I have, Tina. Jill, that I couldn't have said that any better. If I was, if this was like a regular room, I'd be screaming and papowing and all that wonderful stuff, but that just was perfect. I couldn't ask for anything better. Uh, Deshaun, maybe if you try to unmute, uh, Deshaun is someone that I met as well. She's supposed to be speaking and sharing with us. She's having technical difficulties. Um, keep pressing, maybe she can get through. But as we get through, I just want to begin by saying the holidays will never ever be the same for you. And so once this happened, grief is going to come walking in the door. Grief is walking into your life and it's going to be there forever. This is a fact. and. You can talk, you can unmute, you can raise your hand if you can. Um, is this a little scary for you when you think about this to know that you're gonna have this grief forever? When I first thought about it, it was, but I want you to think grief is the same thing as love. So when you have grief, it's love, and the holidays just give us that opportunity to grieve and love and think about that person a little bit more. So I want us to move away from that grief for a minute and Type in or speak, I'd rather speak since we're tiny. Share with me, just throw out some words. What do you think of when you think of the holidays? Throw them out to me, unmute yourself. Let's get chatting here. What are some things you think of when you think of the holidays? Celebrate. Celebrate, what else? Po let's talk about the positive things that you felt in the past. Laughter. Yeah, family. family, family, love. Anyone else? Renee, Phil, what did you think of when you think of the holidays? Good storytelling or memories of you know, other holidays in the past. What about you, Linda, Mommy? What are some things you think of during the holidays? You're probably muted. Uh, I think about family, love, joy, singing. I love, I love Christmas music, and I love putting up Christmas tree. Love it, love it. So those are the good things that we think about, and we have the good, and now going to be a little different for us. So I'll throw out some negative things you might be feeling or thinking now for the holidays. Some roadblocks. What would you say some of those are? What do you feel? 
Anyone angry? Sad? Deborah, what are you feeling now during the holidays? This is fresh for you, super fresh. Phil, Renee? I think avoid. Avoid? Okay. So today my goal is to give you some roadblocks to help you take advantage of this. So when you're feeling these feelings, you can overcome it. Um, these are going to be a part of your life forever. And as Jill said, I love the way she put it. The holidays are going to keep coming. They're going to keep being a part of your life. So it's our job to conquer it from the beginning so we're not stuck in it. So there's four things that we need to do. If you have a piece of paper, I want you to write two words on it. The first word is acceptance and the second word is permission. Now, when you hear those two words, acceptance and permission, I want this interactive. Please speak to me. How does this make you feel when you hear these two words? Uh, relief. Relief. <laughs> what are some other things you think of when you think of these two words? Reality. Say that again, Phil. Uh, acceptance makes me think of reality. Reality. The person is really gone. And sometimes when it's fresh, May is super fresh for you, Deborah. I don't know, it took a while. They say the first year is hard, but then the second year is even harder. And I couldn't understand that. I was just like, what could be worse than this? First year you're there, it's still kind of like, for me, he was on vacation, he was in California. But then the second year it's like, okay, this is real. So the first thing we have to do is we have to accept what actually happened. And then we have to give ourselves permission to move on and to be happy. Now, I'm not saying to forget about the person because that's the worst thing in the world. Um, the truth is the holidays are super hard and this is the time where grief is going to attack us. It's gonna be on your back. It may come from, as Jill would say, little triggering things. You could be out, you see a Lakers uniform. Think of some things so you can prepare yourself, whether it's a Mariah Car Christmas Carol, maybe it's a cutting of a turkey, something that you know and you may not know and you just start crying and bawling. Um, give yourself permission to accept it and to be okay with it. Now, one thing I wanna say, you can do anything you want. You have permission to say no. Linda, you said you wanna work on Christmas, so then work on Christmas. Who are we to say no, go be with friends? That may make you sad. So give yourself permission. It's oh, Say that again. And that makes me think, do you know how great that would be for someone else, Linda? Because you have people, two ways how you'll be helping. One, someone who has to work who wants to be with their family, so you're giving that person joy so they can be with their family. And then secondly, you're in the hospital giving your love, giving your support, because one of the best ways to feel better is to help someone else. And you don't have to give money, you don't have to donate, you know, just giving your time, giving your love. And don't pretend. Uh, you know, a lot of people may sit, think they have to smile and be happy all the time. They don't have to. We spoke about planning. Now let's talk about social media for a second. I absolutely love social media, but Facebook, I don't, and I think Instagram does this too. They give you these memories a year ago, two years ago. I had to literally stop going on Facebook. Like my mother said to me, Mommy, you, Tina, you got so many birthday wishes on Facebook. And I was like, I told you I won't go on Facebook because it can be triggering. So it can be good, it can be bad. Would anyone like to share something good or bad that happened with social media regarding a loved one? maybe even a week later, but whenever I get them, I acknowledge them and let them know how it does make us feel. And then I share them with my family so that they can also be encouraged just by the words that they say. So that's a positive for us. Lisa, you were gonna say something? Yeah, it, it gives me, um, it gives me reason to pause because you know, as life happens, you kind of get caught up in the, the humdrum of going through life and, and my moments to pause and remember this incredible woman Less and less. It doesn't mean I forgot about her, but my intentional 
causing has become less. But when the memory comes, I intentionally take that time to laugh and remember, or I'll see a picture and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe she used to still wear that dress. And it brings me such joy because again, life gets in the way and it doesn't stop. Just because this incredible person has left us, life doesn't stop and then we kind of get back in the flow. But Facebook Goat says, hey, hold on a moment. Let's not forget this incredible person that poured into you, that made you who you are. You know, we may never have met Phil's dad, but we get to see a glimpse of who he was just by seeing who Phil is here. But like how awesome is that? You know, I've never met your son, but my gosh, but he was an ounce of who you show me you are. What an incredible young man that must have been, right? So it's it's those wonderful things that allow us to sit in this space and though we shed tears, like I always say, you know, blessed is a heart that feels something so beautiful or so painful that it sheds tears. So thank I you. Love your heart. Thank you. There's there's no loss about Yes. Something else I wanted to say, it's super important, and Lisa, you said this, is we don't want people to forget. I don't know about you, but the day after my son was murdered, I started writing, okay, not physically writing, in my phone, because I didn't want to forget anything. I forget everything, and I just kept writing and writing and writing, and I think that's what we want outside people to do. So give your friends permission to talk to you. Some people, especially if they haven't lost a loved one, they don't know what to say. They're afraid to talk. Like, do I say something? You know, I have right here, I told you Jamal is back here. I've got the, uh, whatever you call this thing, from the funeral. You know, we have pictures. I have tons of these. But tell your friends. It's the holiday season. You guys know I love social media. I'm like, okay, I'm just telling you now. This is a tough time of year for me. I need your help. I need your support. Tell your friends these things and talk about your loved one. That's so important. Now, during the holidays, Deborah. The grief that you're feeling, multiply that by 10. If you ever had an argument with your sister or your cousins or your family, it's gonna be even worse during the holidays. So prepare yourself because everyone is hurt. And being depressed, it is okay to be depressed, but just don't live there, okay? Give yourself an hour, make little tactics, little rules for yourself. In my phone, I love pictures, I'm a very visual person, and I actually made a folder in my phone with pictures of myself, of my son. It started out to be like an hour of straight crying. I would just sit in my car and I'd scroll through his pictures and I'd cry and pull over on the side of the road because they're like, Tina, you shouldn't drive like that. And I don't know what's the longest time you've ever cried. If it's been over an hour, just raise your hand. If you were like an hour straight of crying, anyone cry an hour straight? It's tough, man. I mean, it's like you, you lose your breath, you're at, and I was like, okay, Tina, first of all, you don't have an hour to waste crying. So then I chopped it down to 45 minutes and I chopped it down to 30 minutes. And now it's been about five, six years. I'm not at five minutes, but five minutes was my marker. And I told my daughter, okay, we don't have time for this. Take five minutes and cry really, really hard. I mean, you're kicking, you're punching, you're angry for five minutes and then it, let it go. So give yourself permission to get mad. This is something else I want you to write down, rituals. I want us all to just throw out before because I'm sure everyone had rituals or routines or things they did during the holidays, whether it was dressing up in pajamas, whether it was going caroling before Christmas. Please, everyone, share one memory with your loved one, something that you did every single year. We'll start with you, Renee, or Phil, whoever wants to go first. And if you can't remember, just blurt it out. Deborah, Lisa, Jill, what's a memory, a ritual that you guys, I have to unmute you. She, she would call me two days before Thanksgiving and say, what do you want me to make for you, baby? And that was our routine. She'd call, I'd run down a slew of things that I didn't think was possible, and she would make them all. Loved this woman. Love it, love it. What was your favorite food that she made? Oh my gosh, she fried, she fried uh, ribs, which I didn't know was humanly possible. And then, now that's my thing. <laughs> love it, love it. Jill, what's a ritual that you used to do every holiday? Okay. Deshaun, do you have service? Oh, sorry. Deshaun, do you have service now? You're muted. Yes, can you, are you able to hear me? 
Katie? Yes, we are. What's a ritual? What's a ritual you used to do? Okay. What about you, Deborah? Was there something you used to always do every? I know you'd go visit him, but anything else from when you were a child that you did growing up as well? Yeah. Well, but I always remember that my dad and my mom, my parents, would, like my dad would like wait till Christmas Eve to make Christmas. I mean, they would be up all night long. Like he'd paint the house, put up the tree. It thought it would be like magic. Like we would go to bed and everything was regular, and when we woke up. Really Christmas. So before so, Christmas, there was no tree or anything? Nothing. Nothing. No, he always did it just so we would wake up and it was like, <gasps> and they would have been just going to bed when we were waking up because they would have been up all night making it Christmas. That is so beautiful. Linda, would you like to share anything or Renee, Phil, Mommy? Just blurt out, unmute yourself. Renee, Phil, Mommy, would you guys like to share something you guys used to always do? For us, it was um, Christmas Eve dinner, always. And um, especially, like, my two kids were, he was the, the only grandfather they ever knew. So those were special times for us. Love it, love it. Phil, Mommy, would you guys like to share a ritual as a child or adult you guys did? Mommy, is there a memory you uh, bring, think of for rituals? Yes, <clears throat> there is. I remember when I was a kid in Bermuda, um, we would go to bed Christmas Eve, no tree up, nothing. And the adults would do everything, and we woke up in the morning, and it was like magic. And then even when I moved to this country, traditions started to change, but then everybody would show up at my, at my mom's house. Everybody had their own homes for Christmas Day. Everybody showed up her own her house and all the gifts. The only bad part about it, we didn't get to open the gifts till after dinner. I love it. I want, I love it. Deborah. I wonder if your family and my mother's family is from the same place with this Christmas the next day. That's beautiful. Does everyone see how thinking about old rituals, even though we're thinking of that person, kind of brings a smile to your face, brings joy? That's why we want to keep those memories alive. Now, moving forward, of course, we're not going to have that person with us, but we want to come up with new rituals. Maybe we change it around just a bit just to keep those people with us all the time. Super important. Include these people our loved ones with your new rituals. And I love how you said, you know, moving forward, okay, we gotta get the electrical knife, and these makes you feel really good. Super, super important, guys, is to communicate with your friends, your family, everyone around you, why? Because, say for example, putting up the Christmas tree really triggers you, and you don't wanna put it up, but your kids put it up, or whatever it is. So communicate, if you already know ahead of time that your sister's gonna get on your nerves, because whatever, whatever, Talk to them. Communication works really, really good. And one more thing. If something brings you joy, do it. Who cares what anyone says? Someone may say, someone said to me, I can't believe you're smiling. I can't believe you're happy. I can't believe you're having fun. This was after, like a few months after he died. And I was just like, okay. Someone said to me, first of all, your loved one, they don't want you here miserable. They don't want you sad. Yes, you are going to be sad. Yes, you're going to have those days. But they want you to thrive. 
Do you think they're up in heaven saying, I want you sad, I want you? No, they want you to have fun. So make sure whatever it is that brings you joy, if it's putting up that Christmas tree, if it's doing whatever, go ahead and do that. Now, before I finish, Deshaun was supposed to speak earlier, but she had technical difficulties. I'm gonna put, turn it over to you for a little bit, Deshaun, so you can share with us uh, your topic. You're muted, we can't hear you. You have to unmute yourself. So Sean, can you read that one more time, but this time just read it a little more slower, a little more intention, because I liked it, but I want to get it into my heart. So, so could you please read that scripture one more time? It's James, it's James 5.16. So that way you can receive it and you can write it down too as well. Is God did not promise faith without change, laughter without sorrow, son without rain. But he did promise strength for the day, comfort for the care, and a light for the way. So just hold on to some comforting words, encouraging words, stem support, and communicate with your families and loved ones as well, and let them know if you do want to be bothered, what your intentions are for the holidays as well. And um, light a candle, put a picture up as well. You know, remember, remember that that was doing this, and it is okay. Thank you very much, Deshaun. So for those of you, I don't know how your screen is set up, but if you see Lisa, Jill, and Deshaun, the four of us, we run a room on Clubhouse. It's Sisters Healed Through Love because we believe everything can be healed through love. And as we finish off now, doing something, I said this before, for someone else is just gonna make you feel so much better. And I do wanna say, it's not gonna get easier. In the beginning, I kept saying, I'd ask people, well, how long was your lost one, your loved one, gone five years ten years like what's the number when I'm finally gonna feel better and I'm not saying it's gonna get easier it just kind of changes you accept certain things um, it's always gonna be a part of you and another thing I want to share as well when is the pain gonna go I'll ask well when is your love for that person gonna go it's probably never gonna go so the pain is never gonna go and you want to embrace it you want to feel it and then let it go to be honest with you when I started this room, Lisa was the first one on and I was playing some music and when I saw Lisa's face, if you guys didn't know, she's a tear whisperer. She didn't even say a word and I started, I'm like crying. I'm just like, why are you crying, Tina? <laughs> you know, when this started because it's just filled with so much joy and love. Lastly, what I want you to write on there is self-love, taking care of yourself. It could be as simple as shutting down and listening to some music. It could be as simple as going for a walk, but it's super important that you take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't help anyone else. Um, I'd like to open up, if anyone would like to share a story, share a moment, Lisa, uh, Jill, Deshaun, anyone in here, because like I said, here, it's just to let you know, the holidays are gonna be tough, but you are gonna get through it. Make sure you plan. Now, if we were in person, we'd do an activity. And one of the activities that I was doing, that I was done to, um, taught to do was some people, I'm not sure if you celebrate Christmas or Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or whatever, but we usually decorate during the holidays. So what we did was we had an empty ball for the Christmas tree and then you can get little decorations, whether it's paper, and then write something on the paper and put it in the Christmas ball. So you can do this with your family, you can do this with your friends, with yourself, do some type of activity to cherish the person. Some people will do the lanterns where you let the lanterns go up. I like to do balloons. 
If anyone here, I would love to hear what are some things you guys do to honor your loved ones, whether it's during the holidays, the memorial. Do you do anything, Jill, every year, or Phil, or Renee? Anyone like to share? Well, truthfully, we really just started, I'm gonna say celebrating last Christmas. I wouldn't put decorations up. I mean, because Christmas was Bakari's favorite time of year and my favorite time of year, and it was just too painful. So really what I found us doing is like running. Like we wouldn't stay home, we wouldn't go to Houston. Houston was where we were our last Christmas together. So what we do is we go to um, Wisconsin, which is where my family is, but it was only because I could kind of even be isolated, even though there's tons of people around. I didn't have to engage because it was just me and they were busy doing all that they were doing. And so I could sit there and just be alone suggest that but that's what worked for me and so now what we do is um, you know we talk more about the car we talk about the stories um, that make us laugh but it's still it's still so raw even though it's been four years so it's very hard to really do too much for me but I know that my family finds joy in that and I don't stop them from doing it I just, I've had enough I just go somewhere else and go to a room or go I'm I'm glad that you shared that, Jill, because something else I want to add to you, Deborah, Phil, Renee, make sure, and Linda as well. Something you may want to do is to have an escape plan ahead of time. So let's just say, for example, you decide, okay, we're gonna be around family and just already have it set out so you know such and such, your sister may scream at you, your mom may scream at you, the cake may make you cry. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the bathroom, I'll be right back. So you have the same, go to the bathroom and then you're in the bathroom and you're bawling. You're going for a cigarette, you're going for a walk, whatever it is, but try to have an escape plan. Oh, I'm gonna to go to the store and buy a cake. I'm gonna go, that's super important. So have an escape plan. That's another thing. Would anyone else like to share? Jill, you, I thought I was a professional mourner. You're, you're there with me, girl. I always say I am a professional mourner because when it comes to mourning, you know, I can, you, you, I love it, Jill. An escape plan and a word, elephants got no bones. That's my word, I say that all the time. Would anyone else like to share? Um, before we get out of here, I would love to hear what you have to say. I know Lisa has something, I'm just throwing it. sponsors for everything else we should need we should have a sponsor for grief you know that one person that you can call and say all right I'm on the ledge I need you to walk me through this one whether they just sit on the phone and breathe with you or they talk you through it or whatever where you don't have to go into the big explanation as to what's going on but you've already set them that I need you to be my person if I'm going through I may call I think that's important and consider that sometimes when we're calling someone and no one's answering, those are the times when God says, I just want you to lean and rely on me and not anyone else. But it's during these times that I think it's important for us to remember to live. You know, these people that we love so much cannot live anymore, at least not on this side. So let's live on purpose for them. Let's live with intention for them. Let's take heed to the fact that they left us far earlier than we anticipated, which is all the more reason for us to live with the utmost intention, to love with that much more intensity, and to really um, relish in every moment that we have, because I'm sure we'd give anything to have one more moment with that person. So I think we need to really take heed to those those things, and, and grief is, the guiding post it's not a resting stop like tina said allow yourself that time and remember tears are cleansing so give yourself that so i want to add something to what lisa said she said have a sponsor i'm gonna say you need a lot of sponsors because that one person may get tired i'm not gonna say they get tired of you but i had my daughter as a crutch 
and I, I would feel bad at times, like, okay, I'm giving too much. And my mother, I hate to say this, I love her, but she's a horrible sponsor because she loves me and she loves my son and she just really couldn't help. So I'd call my aunt. And you have different people at different times of your life, so have more than one sponsor. I'm curious, does anyone here do this besides me? My niece is now five. I found a video on my phone when she was two years old. She couldn't even talk. And we were, I'm not gonna say we were forcing her, but we were teaching her to know who my grandmother was, who my son was, and the video I have, we're like, go in the living room and get a picture of grandma. And she ran in there, I don't know how she did this, she got the picture, she came back. Go get a picture of Molly. She ran in the other room, and, th and she's like two years old. Does anyone else try to have the new family members who doesn't know the, you know, the person who passed away, remember them? Does anyone do that? Love to hear. No? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, think about it. You know, you have your friends that will ask you about your loved one. One, because they love you and they realize that it brings you joy, right? But then, as you said, Tina, sometimes we get in our own feelings and feel like, well, maybe they don't want to really care about this. But then when we have this new person that we get to reintroduce to this person that we love so much, that was a part of this family, that's exciting. That's exciting that you get to share these wonderful stories. And then you get to see how they look through their eyes. You get to see them and hear them get excited and ask more questions. So absolutely. Wonderful, like wonderful. That. So I want to hear what you guys have learned so far because, you know, in teaching, learning. So I want everyone one at a time, a takeaway moment, an aha moment that you got from today's session that's going to help you through the holidays. Jill, you helped me with that uh, word. What did you call it? Secret word, password, escape word. Escape plan and escape word. That's what I, I got out of here, an aha moment to learn. I loved how you were talking about trust because I don't know about you guys. Raise your hand if you had a difficult, Jill and, and Lisa, they're amazing, um, had a difficult relationship with God when this first happened. I don't know about you, but God was not my friend. In the beginning, I was like, I'm mad at you. I didn't want to talk to him. But like Lisa says all the time, it's a relationship. You're going to have good days with him and bad days. So, um... Yeah, give me your aha moments with your start. Renee, I would love to hear from you. Okay, Renee's having difficulties maybe. I think that the main thing is that it, it's okay, but like it's normal to still be sad. I mean, my dad has been gone since 2006. It might as well have just been yesterday, right? So, um, like what you said, Tina, it, it does not go away. We just handle it. Is there anything that you learned today that kind of helped you, that you think may help you out through the holidays? Yeah, just, um, I think, like, that focus, like, on the good, but, but if it's, it's too much, it's okay to, to step away and be out of the, the busyness of the, the day. Love it, love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Phil, would you like to share anything you may have learned in aha moment? Maybe you can give us a tip or advice because I feel, I th I'm not going to say I thought I knew it all, but I thought I was pretty good at this grief thing and then Jill comes along and I'm like, ooh. So maybe you can share something with us. Share, uh, but as far as something that's been helpful was uh, about giving others permission to to have hold space for you in your grieving. Uh, I felt like it's hard to uh, to enter into somewhere and um, and be sad in the holidays when you you don't want to bring somebody else down, but you know sharing your story and sharing where you're at, uh, it does kind of help. Uh, and it helps others have that, you know, to give them the permission to, to ask you about how the holidays make you feel or, or whatever. And in certain scenarios, that can feel safer than others, I suppose. But, uh, but I, I, that was a good takeaway for me. I think I would like to say add it to that when you're in that moment, because I can see if it's New Year's or Christmas, as you said, Someone, and I hate when someone says this to me. I'm like, don't ask me how, in the beginning, someone would always say, how you doing? You never want to ask someone 
who lost a loved one, how are they doing? Never, ever, 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 ever ask them that question because it's just kind of triggering a little bit. Even though if you ask me, I'm gonna say I'm amazing, but um, when you're in that moment and you're talking in the holidays, you start the conversation. You know, I'm thinking about my dad, I remember when he did this, blah, 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 and then that person may ask for more information and it makes them feel comfortable as well because again, some people are scared to talk. Deborah, did you get any takeaways, any ahas, anything that may help you out? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the planning, you know, to be very careful to plan um, ahead of time. And, and that's very important. So that was helpful to me. And just giving myself permission to go through the different feelings. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Linda, would you like to share anything you may have learned or a tip or something you may want to add? to be the 22nd year without my mom for Christmas time and it doesn't get any easier it's just different you just learn how to have new things or celebrate different you know new things and remember your loved ones so for me it's just um, like I said I just try to do things to honor my parents that I know because they were always helping other people so not really an aha moment for me but for me it's just knowing that uh, my parents love family, they love people, so I love family, I love people, and just to, you know, I just, I, I have to honor that because, you know, I, I had to talk to a, a lady who lost her mom on her birthday two weeks ago, and the reality is that either you're going to bury a child or you're going to bury a parent. It's, I mean, that's, that's going to be our life. We, we're going to, one is going to bury the other. The natural order is for parents, uh, for the children to bury, bury their parents. But you know, even burying your parents is difficult and it's hard and it can be messy. It can be all the things just like burying your child. So it's just, it's a, it's a cycle of life and we just have to find a way to get through it. And, and you don't get over it, you just get through it. Thank you, thank you, Linda. Mommy, would you like to share anything before we get out of here? Looks like she's muted over there. So as we finish, I want to, Mommy, you want to share anything? Anything you may have learned? You're muted. Okay, maybe she doesn't want to speak. Are you going to say anything? Um, taking care of yourself is very important. Listen to your body when you're going through the different stages. It's very important to take care of your body when you're breathing um, because your body can reflect off those things. Thank you, Deshaun. Mommy, is there anything you would like to share? Yes. Just try to be aware of your feelings and know that you can always need to reach out, have someone that you can reach out to if you're not feeling 100%. Thank you, thank you. Not claiming anything, just have people that you can reach out to if you're not 100%. Thank you. Lisa, would you like to finish off with anything? Um, you know, in the midst of us giving ourselves the permission to feel what we feel, give yourself the permission to feel joy in the midst of this storm as well. You know, I know that some people will come and say, well, how are you smiling? They just give yourself permission to feel joy in the midst of this storm as well. Thank you, thank you. I would like Jill to lead us with a prayer to end, but before we finish, one final thing that's super helpful for you guys. Live in the moment. If you're ever feeling stress, anxiety, depressed, whatever, don't think about the past, don't think about the future, think about this moment, live in a state of gratitude. Jill, would you like to take us out with a um, final prayer, please? Yes, but can I add a couple yep. of quick things? I mean, Tina, of course I'm gonna say Lisa, but anyway. <laughs> First of all, I wanted to thank Jill for joining us and being on our own end. You're like in the center of my screen, which is awesome also. And my husband's name is Phil. But I loved your story about the knife. I mean, because it reminded me to make sure that we do things that are lighthearted to remember our loved ones. And then I want to touch on what Linda was saying about the normal order of death. Even though that is the normal order, 
it is not something that won't wipe you off your feet at all. So don't let people put that in your head. Because I had a friend actually call me and say, well, you know, your mom lived a great life and that's the normal order of things. So we, we expect that to happen. And I'm like, what? That is not how you respond to that at all. Because yes, you kind of expect it to happen, but when it happens, it's still gonna knock you off your feet no matter what, especially when it's an unexpected loss. And then um, the other thing is, I wanted to thank Linda for joining us because Linda is a social worker. So she's saying she works in a hospital, but she has a really important job in the hospital and she is always there for other people and she's such a giver. And um, her parents were surrogate parents to me and my husband because our families were both um, somewhere else. So anyway, I just wanted to give Thank you for sharing. Out. And thank you all for being here with us. Thank you, Tina, for having the vision for this. And then I will take us away. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord, thanking you for your grace, your mercy, and your everlasting love. We thank you for Tina's spirit. We thank you for her discernment. We thank you, Lord, for everyone who joined this room. We thank you for even those who wanted to join and weren't able to join, Father. We know that this is a season that um, is challenging, Father, but we know that you are not um, one that will put us through something that we can't handle without you. So we thank you for even the challenges that you put us through. We thank you for the people that are going to walk in our midst to help us through this journey, Father. And we thank you for being with us to walk us through this journey. So, Father, I just ask that everyone would have a peaceful holiday season, a joyful holiday season, and a season full of love and memories. So in his heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming. I'm so jealous of your prayer, uh, Jill. You pray so well. Amen. <laughs>